So the last video here on the channel went over a comment made by Elliot Friedman on the newest episode of the 32 Thoughts podcast, going over the sends, going over Seth Jones and that entire conversation over there. It's on the channel if you want to watch that commentary that we made. But in that video, I did say that the other notes that Friedman had on the recent episode of 32 Thoughts were interesting enough to make even more videos about them. So that's what we're doing here. In fact, we're using the same tweet from Account for Hockey James to make this conversation happen, as after the Chicago Seth Jones thing, there is another comment made on this idea. We're going over to the Sabres, and we're talking once more about the giant himself, the guy whom Yaramir Yager walked so he could run. Let's talk about Tage Thompson, one of the best freaking players in the National Hockey League today. Now, I know this is like the fifth or sixth time in the past two months we've talked about Thompson, but for good reason. He is so good, and with all the hype about him so far in this season's worth of play, the contract, how much of a steal it might be, how many goals he scores, how many points he's getting, as well as how he's probably the main force of a Buffalo Sabres team that seems to be turning the corner, we gotta go back to the humble roots. Talk about what Tage Thompson had been in the past and go over a story that Elliot Friedman talked about on 32 Thoughts. Now, as per the last video, the link will be in the description if you want to go ahead and listen to the audio segment, get Friedman's entire quotes in context there. Link in the description, watch it if you want. But this is what editor in J account for hockey said in regards to the Friedman comments. A very good team, according to Elliot, could have traded a fifth round pick to Buffalo for Tage Thompson two to three years ago, but they turned it down. And with this idea in mind, you gotta think about what could have freaking been, man. A fifth round pick for Tage Thompson, a fifth round pick for a guy who today is on pace for a hundred and what is that? He's got himself 26 goals in 32 games played and 50 total points. 50 divided by 32 multiplied out by 82. That is on pace for 128 points. 129 points even. 66 goals. That guy is absolutely dominant. And he had the opportunity to get traded for a fifth round pick. It's just the team that had the fifth was like, eh, nah. We don't want to give up a fifth round pick for Tage Thompson. And with this time frame being outlined in the Friedman quote two to three years ago, what I wanted to do was go back into that time frame and see what exactly it was Tage Thompson was. Because, I mean, we all kind of know the story of this guy now. It's really been illuminated because of his success this season. But Thompson was a former first round pick in 2016, 26th overall out of the University of Connecticut system. He was a really good player. He was a big guy back then as well, and he was dominant in the NCAA. It's just as his career went on, he never really had that sort of breakout mold. The Blues kind of tried to play him as a big guy, which is understandable because he was a big guy. It's just playing him as the guy to go out there and body check people and be a wall. That's not really what Tage Thompson excels at. Sure, he is big, but he doesn't play like it. And I think this season is really starting to show off that putting him in a box and telling him, okay, you're six foot seven, so go out there and body check guys. It's not really the best way to go out there and develop a player. I'll forgive the St. Louis Blues for typecasting Thompson into that kind of mold, but as a result, you saw him never really break out on that team. Nine points in 41 games played in his only St. Louis Blues season, and then he got traded for O'Reilly, alongside of Sabotka, and who was the other guy? Oh boy, Sabotka, Tage Thompson, and Berglund! That's who it was, Patrick Berglund, right. But even when Thompson was in the Sabres system, he still kind of had that transitory process as he grew and developed into the star he is today. 12 points, 65 games. 14 points, 38 games. This is about two to three years ago when Elliot Friedman said a team would have been able to take on Tage Thompson for only a fifth round pick. If you look at it in today's terms, that's like a $10 million value for only one late round selection. That's crazy. It's just Thompson and his development was so stagnant in this time frame that if this is 100% factual, a really good team turned down the offer to get an eventual superstar for what would have been the absolute steal of the century had the trade been made and Thompson developed in the way that he has so far. 
Now, who's to say, if Thompson goes to another team, he ends up becoming the superstar that he is. He scored yesterday against the Vegas Golden Knights, another really nice skill type of goal where he drags it around the goaltender. But Tage really broke out last season. New coaching staff, new Buffalo Sabres. You have all these other guys coming in here. Tuck, Darlene is starting to look good. Power is here now, too. And of course, this season, he's producing it the way that he is, of course, on pace for 130 points, which is wild. But who's to say that if two, three years ago, you had Thompson traded to some other team, he would have broken out this way. If he is on a team, let's say like the Boston Bruins, for example, the Colorado Avalanche, the Tampa Bay Lightning, if he is on any of these good teams, because Friedman did note it was a very good team that had the opportunity to get Thompson, if he's on any of these teams, does he get the opportunity to be as good as he is right now? If he's playing behind Stamkos, if he's playing behind, at the time, Kadri and McKinnon, if he's playing behind Bergeron and Krejci, does he get the opportunity to be as good as he is right now? Do they even say to him, hey, go out there, work on your skills, work on your shot, and we'll put you in a position to succeed? Don Granado and the Buffalo Sabres kind of told him that, and now he's amazing. But is there a guarantee that other NHL teams would have seen that sort of potential, especially if they're not going out there and trading away a fifth round pick for this guy? Like, just imagine if anybody with the benefit of hindsight would have stepped into that NHL management meeting. Hey, we have a fifth round pick on our hands and we got Tage Thompson on the other line. He's ours if we just give this fifth round pick up. This would be setting up for absolute robbery. Fifth round picks barely have any chance of making the NHL in the first place. And the fact that Thompson was being marketed for that, A, goes out there and shows how much his value declined from being a first round pick in 2016, and B, showcases how much the Sabres and other teams around the league just did not believe in him. My gosh, you go over to the Sabres and you talk about the Pagulas, you talk about the crap they had gone through the past few years, the development of Darlene, how stagnant that was, the development of Eichel and the story of his surgery, and how everybody in management just didn't really have any answers. Well, now you got him. Don Granado is your guy, and it's not even like the Sabres are, like, amazing anyway, it's just they're a team that's having fun, they're playing the right way, you have some guys that are really succeeding in the roles they've been given, and it just looks like an enjoyable environment to be a part of. Alex Tuck being the number one leader on this team definitely helps that as well, but at the same time, you have other players skilling it up, scoring points, and that definitely adds to the morale too. Darlene, Thompson, even the younger guys, Jack Quinn, Casey Middlestad is sort of getting it back together too. It's kind of wild, isn't it? And just to remember that Tage Thompson could have been traded for as little as a fifth round pick, but said team did not want to go out there and shell that kind of a pick for this guy. Kind of makes everybody now, with hindsight included, a lot more thankful that he did not go to a team like Boston or Tampa or Colorado or something like that. I'm just throwing names out there because Friedman said it was a good team. I mean, there are a lot of good teams that really could have benefited from a 130-point pace player. I mean, on pace for 60 goals, too. Imagine that guy playing with Stamkos. Imagine that guy playing with Kucherov. Imagine that guy playing with, dare I say, Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl especially at the contract he's on right now, $1.4 million AAV. His 7.1 AAV extension does not kick in until next season, and that takes him till 2030. If he gets 50 goals every single season, that's an absolute steal of a contract. And the Buffalo Sabres, I mean, we've made so many videos about this guy that I don't really know if there's anything else we need to say, but... Just be grateful that you still have him. Be grateful that a team out there two, three years ago was not willing to trade away a fifth round pick for this guy. Maybe a six, but then again, if the Sabres traded Thompson away for like a sixth or something and Thompson became what he is today, then yeah, you could probably imagine the doom and gloom in Buffalo would have transcended a little bit longer than it had. But either way, thoughts in the comment section below about what Friedman said. Links will be in the description to the 32 Thoughts podcast if you want to go ahead and listen to that yourself. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, Trolls 99. And bye. <laughs>